Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at ordering some stuff online basically. Now due to the current restrictions on travel and things like that I can't go to a shop and I no longer work in a shop to actually just go and get some cleanup crew. Currently all one of my five foot tanks has got is some dove snails and my Evo has absolutely nothing in it. So I need some cleanup crew to put into my systems. Now, having a look through eBay and uh, other sites, there aren't many shops left online that actually have a lot of stock in. This is due to the fact that imports have pretty much stopped. So I'm gonna have to find somewhere that actually has some stock. And luckily I have, Essex Marines have still got stock. So I'm gonna be ordering from them. Um, I'm gonna be getting some hermits. I'm gonna be getting some conches. And I'm going to be getting also some snails, which I haven't had before, which are the spiny astria. So these are ones that are reportedly to be very good at eating hair algae and um, just a generally much better type of astria than the standard one. So basically, we'll just see what happens. I've never done this before. I've never ordered any livestock off of the Internet. And uh, there's a first time for everything, I guess. So now the order's placed, I'll give it till after the Easter bank holiday for it to arrive. Should be around Wednesday or Thursday. So the items that I ordered have actually arrived. There was a little bit of an issue with the delivery, unfortunately, i.e. it was supposed to be next day. However, the courier company decided to not deliver it next day and actually take two days to deliver it because they're too busy. So this livestock's been in the mail for 48 hours and we'll have to just see what's in the box. I haven't opened it. The company has assured me that the shipping policy that they do can handle this kind of length of shipping. So without further ado, we will open up and have a look. Let's have a look. Newspaper. So we've got heat packs in there, so that should have kept them alive. I mean, it's not that cold at the moment anyway. So what I have in here are hermit crabs. Water's a little bit cloudy, but I can see a hermit crab. Feels a little bit cold, but not too cold and uh, strawberry conches. I mean, inverts tend to be really tough anyway, and that's a really good size bag. If you were to get this um, imported from the Philippines, the bag that this, this little snail would come in would probably be the third of the size. <clears throat> so it's not a real issue. Snails are looking all right. These are spiny astria. It's not a species that I've had before. I wanted these because they're reportedly really good at eating hair algae and bryopsis. Not that I've got a lot of that, but there's a little bit of hair algae creeping in to this tank. So I thought I'd add some to um, just mop that up. Another little strawberry conch. I think that's everything I ordered. Or is there more? Any surprises? No, that's all I've ordered. <clears throat> so we're looking all right, actually. Um, so we've got the snails, conches, which are still snails, I guess, and hermit crabs. I'm not going to acclimate them over to this tank, actually. I'm going to acclimate them over to my main system, this big system here. And the reason for that is... I want to keep an eye on them, and I've got this tank here which is not really doing anything. This is kind of my tank of just junk. Uh, there's a bit of hair algae in there for them to eat, so I'll acclimate them into that one, and then I can keep an eye on them. When I acclimate things, especially inverts, I tend to worry more about temperature than I do about salinity so much. And the reason for this is because temperature shocks the thing that tends to do the most damage. Whereas salinity shock, I haven't really found does a lot of damage, especially to inverts. They tend to just kind of get on with it. And if the salinity is a little bit out, then they're not really affected too much. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get them up to temperature first by floating them. You 
can see that that conch there has got plenty of energy. It's trying to turn itself over. And then I'll take a reading of the salinity in one of the bags. And if it's more or less close to what salinity I'm running. So I'm running at two, uh, 1.025. And if this is within two points of that, I'll, I won't bother with salinity drip acclimation. I'll just get that to temperature and chuck them straight in. The bags have been floating for about half an hour and I've just popped them open, obviously using a pair of scissors, just to check everything's fine obviously. At this point if there's any ammonia in the bag it will become more toxic because the pH will be rising. But all we're doing now is having a quick look at the livestock to see if there are any DOAs. Um, hermits are all moving around so they all look perfectly fine. It's the snails that are the hard ones to tell because you won't really know. I mean, you can tell with snails sometimes because you'll get a, a horrible smell if you've lost the whole bag. Um, and also, ones that have died occasionally, you can lose the trap door, and that, that's a pretty good indication that it's died. Um, conches wise, they're <laughs> definitely alive, so that's good. So, what I'm going to do with the Astria is actually put them all face down so that um, they can move, they don't have to flip themselves over and I'll know by tomorrow probably if any of them haven't moved they're probably dead. Last minute change of plans, I actually put some of the hermits into my tanks because I've never had problems with hermits in terms of um, acclimating. If they're alive when you receive them there's a good chance they are going to be alive for a good long time. So I've put three of the seven in there and then I've put the rest of them so four into this system here so they're going to have a long happy life for the amount of shells in there for them to choose from i can't see any reason why they're going to have any issues in there and then in terms of the snails so both the conches i should probably turn that conch over actually both the conches have gone into this tank just for the time being they will be moved so i'm going to put one into um, the tank we just saw and then I'm going to put the other one into that Evo over there because currently there's no livestock in there. And that's the destination for a couple of these snails as well. I might put one or two of these snails in there and the rest are going to be going into this system here. Because I needed some kind of cleanup crew for that and we can see that the snails are starting to come out. They're starting to move around. Now bear in mind that they were supposed to be in transit for only 24 hours. They've actually been in transit for 48 hours and kudos to the company that have shipped these to me. They've packed them really well and they've given them enough leeway that if a problem happens, like it did happen, then actually the livestock will be okay. Now, so far only two of them are moving, but they've just gone in so that's probably why. So in terms of ordering livestock from the internet, I would say that it's definitely a viable thing that you can do. Normally I would actually go and visit a shop personally and buy my livestock but being the way that things are at the moment where all the fish shops have been closed this is not an option but a lot of shops have remained open via the internet so uh, this is Essex Marines the reason I ordered from them in particular was because they're kind of the only shop at the moment that I can find that's got a few inverts in stock Lots of things have run out, but I would use them again. It's not their fault the courier messed around with the delivery and they did pack it really well just in case that kind of thing happened and it's worked out really well. All of the livestock I've received looks to be in good condition. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video now. It's just a quickie just to show you the delivery of my inverts. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like and a comment below. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. So thank you once again for watching and happy fish keeping.